Hey, I'm Eric, and we're telling Southern stories. And I, boy, have I got a story for you? I do. Who doesn't have a Walmart story, am I right? Am I right? Wow, that's a, that's a great question. That's such a loaded question. Because usually for like a Walmart situation, I'm like, I'm in and I'm out. I don't want to spend any more time in there than I have to. Everyone knows this brand of people that will wear like the, pajama, the printed pajamas with like Spider-Man or something on there. People wearing inappropriate attire. We all have seen personally ill-fitting clothing, bad attitudes, and not enough people checking people out. So, I mean, we can all meet eye to eye on that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you put on sandals, um, please, please, make sure your feet are presentable. I did get my hair done in a Walmart salon once. Got a blowout. Why? Because it was cheap and I was like, it, what's the worst they can do? Went to Walmart one night, it was kind of late, I would say about 10 o'clock, and this guy, is on a, a mobile scooter and he's riding around and I just hear this noise and I'm like, he's playing this noise and it's like this deep, warbly baritone opera. This guy is legitimately riding around on a mobility scooter singing opera. <laughs> Goodbye. So me and my friends were having a sleepover. This was probably like early high school. We were like, you know, gonna do the things that, you know, teenagers do in a small town, which is uh, go get up to trouble in the Walmart. We get in there and we see the little like old, old person like buggy scooters. Of course, that sparks a brilliant idea. And it's like, why don't we play Marco Polo in the store, scooting around on these little buggy scooters. And He's just doing it for his own pleasure, and he just keeps riding. Like, it's like he's cruising the, the Hardee's parking lot or something, but he's riding up and down and up and down the aisles, just singing full voice. And no one's stopping him. No one's even paying attention. So we're playing. We play a couple of rounds. And then, of course, security gets called over because we're annoying um, plenty of shoppers. And they're like, y'all got to leave. You're we like, oh man, but we're almost done with that game. I just remember being like, well, I need to get a blowout. I didn't know Walmart had a salon. Neato. It was pretty nice. Get your hair done at Walmart. Easily, easily eaten um, chitlins. Well, canned anything. I mean, can we talk about the thing that happened on this channel where I had to eat pig's feet? This was at my dad's house, okay? He was like, everyone just bring something. So this is great if everyone does it right. Okay, they didn't. The mac and cheese and something else, it was like, no offense to Stouffer's, but it was not like someone's grandma made it. It was like Stouffer's mac and cheese. There was no, no pull from the, like, and honestly, it sort of ruined Christmas. There's nothing wrong with canned goods, okay? I love me a good canned green bean. But when you're having a whole group of people, I just feel like fresh is always best, am I right? There was one place I went as a kid and it was like a friend that I went to school with in elementary school and I went to her family's house on a Sunday afternoon after church. There were 10 people, but one can of something dumped out and that was expected to serve 10 people. And I'm like, never enough food. Probably the worst uh, Southern food experience was had in New York City. We all wanted something to eat. We wanted like original Southern food. And we wound up going to this barbecue restaurant, which I just should have known better. I honest to God should have known better. It was so bad. It was like they put ketchup on the barbecue and like maybe doused it with some liquid smoke. I, on the other hand, was just like, uh, I guess just bring this without the sauce on it. And it was boiled chicken. Brains and eggs. Whereas pig's brains and eggs mixed together, I've had that before. Of course, chitlins, pig's feet. Growing up in my household, <laughs> stomach turning. But uh, you know, they were making it with love, but uh, it's, it's kind of hard to make pig intestines edible. <laughs> One time on this channel, 
Um, the producers made me and Talia eat the most horrific foods known to man. The gelatin salad was disgusting. You should always have enough and extra because in about three hours, the reality is you're gonna have, wanna have a, a, you want seconds. You want a midnight snack. You want a 10 p.m. snack. You want an afternoon after my nap snack. Like these are the things that you want. And then our final, our final feat of the day was tasting a pickled pig's foot, which came in a little glass jar and you could see the skin of the pig and its little pig knuckle looked just like my knuckle. And I about lost my mind. Uh, one Saturday morning, I had some eggs, but they looked kind of like grayish. You know, it had like a mix of, of yellow and gray. And, uh, you know, uh, I was eating it, uh, not just thinking, I mean, I, I don't know what it was. Uh, I thought it might be like some sauce meat or something. But, um, so she, I, I'm eating it and she said, You like the, your brains and eggs, baby? And I was like, excuse me? Someone didn't put the time and care in, and I'm not going to point out who, but <laughs> we'll talk about it at home. As Southerners, we don't eat because we're hungry. We just eat because it's good.